everybody and uh, first of all thanks to Will Hunt for being with Planet Drum and our friends. Good to see you again. Let's uh, start with uh, this new project you're around. Um, you have 11, 11 uh, concerts, 11 gigs, right. all together without stopping. Yeah. Music is, has, is energy, isn't it? It has to be. <laughs> you, you better love it. You are very well known uh, here in Italy for being uh, uh, not only uh, the drummer of uh, Vasco Rossi, but uh, for Evanescence. Uh, but now you are here with um, uh, this new uh, group uh, with Nirvana Project, but the, the band name is uh, Third. Right. How do you approach playing in such different situations from big arenas to pubs like this one? I think it, at its core it's always the same thing, you know, you're just you're playing rock music, it's high energy and there's you know a lot of different styles of rock music from different you know generations and I just try to um, you know just put myself in that element you know I consider myself to be a chameleon and can kind of play just about any style of rock, hard rock and you know on the, the I guess the lighter side of metal um, and I just I put the same amount of energy and effort into it whether it's a place like Killjoy here in Rome or if it's Stadio Olimpica in Rome and it's just that that comes from the passion to play you know with um, with this band uh, you're working on a new record uh, with remarkable lyrics that convey messages and also emotions uh, but um, there's also a gritty sound apart from uh, expecting a great and exciting live tonight uh, do you want to anticipate something about this new project well we're, we're working on a record right now um, we, we're about half maybe a little more than halfway finished um, and we're taking our time with it we're not rushing because we want it to be right um, we're working with a producer in uh, the States, a guy by the name of Dave Bendith, who's done everything from Breaking Benjamin to Bring Me the Horizon to uh, uh, Paramore to, I mean, just everything. And um, he's been a great collaborator for us, and we're taking our time with him and doing it right, you know. And, you know, there'll be some announcements coming soon about, about the album. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're getting close. It's, it's, it's good. So stay tuned on Planet Drum. Absolutely. Stay tuned on Planet Drum. You'll hear it here first. <laughs> Um, one curiosity, on last interview uh, we've made, um, it was 2017 if I'm not wrong, um, you told me uh, that when you were called uh, by, um, uh, to go and play with Vasco Rossi, yeah. you didn't even know him and you had to learn uh, so many songs all, all together. Do you have um, a way to write down notes, drum tabs or something that uh, makes you when you're on stage uh, understand on the spot a song, how to start a song that is, you don't know it by heart? Well, I try not to go on stage unless I know it by heart, unless the muscle memory's there and I'm not thinking about it, because that's the only way to be able to give a really good performance. I mean, I could sit there and watch and read sheet music and do this, but that's not, that's, you know, that's the playing part is only a part of who I am. There's a whole other part of who I am, which is the performance part. And the only way to be able to do a performance the way that I like to do it is to just know it. Now I've been put in situations where I don't have time to do that and I have to, you know, I have to rely on that to a point and, you know, it kind of starts with sort of charting some things out but then really it just becomes these flow charts which are very skeletal and just kind of let me know the, you know, like a very basic outline of a song structure. Um, so I try to make it as minimalist as possible and not, not to where I'm actually just reading a piece of sheet music, you know, bar to bar. Um, but you know, there's been a couple times where you know, I had to do that, so don't like to. But yeah, there's no emotions in that. Yeah, exactly. It's very, very, uh, very stale, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. 
you have a lot of fans. Um, have you ever had a fan ask you strange requests? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to think about that one. Um, I find it. I've de I definitely find it interesting and kind of strange when strangers come up to me and ask me to hold their baby and take pictures with their baby. I mean, that's like that's a big responsibility, man. Holding your little baby. Um, that's always weird. Uh, that happened yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, but strange requests. I mean, not really. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes people ask you to sign weird body parts, but. Other than that, it's, people are pretty well behaved. <laughs> what is your favorite dish? Oh, favorite dish. I, you know, when I'm home, I cook a lot um, and uh, I grill out. You know, I, I have a pretty uh, intricate uh, grilling system at my house. And um, I like to make like, you know, traditional American barbecue like, uh, like brisket and uh, pulled pork and ribs and stuff like that. You know, I take a brisket and smoke it overnight for you know 14 15 hours you know and do it do it right um, but then I really 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 love like everybody knows me knows that I love pizza so when I come to Italy it's uh, it's you know it's a holy grail of pizza it's incredible you know um, but I, and then I get turned on to so much cool stuff here all the different cheeses I mean I love wine this is a great place to be for that and um, but uh, you know Alberto my t manager over here and the agent takes me to a lot of really cool places and feeds me this pasta like we were in Verona two days ago and went to this place that's pasta to go in a cup and it's the only place you can get it but it's the most amazing pasta I've ever had in my life I mean it's so simple but you can't find that in America you know just can't simple things also music simple yeah. things always work better yeah I you know certainly for this for my in my <laughs> life yes for me yeah yeah Okay, going back to drums, uh, you've been playing uh, pearl drums uh, for many years. Um, is there any specific reason uh, that you choose pearl drums and can you describe your, your drum kit? Um, you know, I think that Pearl's a very unique company in the sense that they have a shell recipe, the way that they make their shells, that is completely under them. And every drum manufacturer will pretty much tell you, yeah, we have our own way that we do it, which, which is true. but. I think that what Pearl has done with it is so innovative, like in the, particularly within the reference uh, series, the reference and the reference pure. And um, I, I, I'm lucky enough to have a reference kit. Well, I have t two reference kits. Uh, I have one here and one in the States. And then I have a reference pure in the States. I'm actually using with Evanescence right now with a brand new Icon rack system. Um, which is incredible, by the way. But and I, I really love the reference pure. I mean, they're thinner shells. They're a little bit closer to the Masters custom, um, but they just sound incredible. And even like these, these are reference. They're masterworks because of, the, of the custom finish. But it's the reference recipe, um, and they're just they're big. You know, they sound massive, and uh, you, know, you have to hit them to make them sing right. But that's they're built for guys like me. Certainly, these are um, the reference pures. You know, a lot more articulate and. Um, maybe musical, uh, but these are just incredible drums. You know, the hardware is great, the drums are great, um, the, the company's great. Very by, the, by the way, the finish is it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I can't take credit for that. That's something that Artist Relations in Germany uh, said, hey, we got think this might be good for you. This is a 22 by 20. It's a long kick drum. Um, that's a 12 by 13, and the, we've got 16 by 16 and 18 by 18. So this is uh, this drum. I didn't know if I was going to like it, but it's incredible. It sounds so big, you know, a lot of a lot of punch. With an 18 uh, floor tom, I would expect a 24. You know, I but the one thing I like 24s too. I mean. Uh, I'm afraid though, like on a drum like this, like if you get too long and too big around, you really lose something. And, I, and I'm a fan of like 26 inch bass drums, but I like those to be, you know, 16 inches deep at the most, maybe 14. Um, but this drum being 22 around and uh, 20 long was very special. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know if I was going to like it, but it's incredible.
As a rocker, have you ever used virtual instruments or electronic drums to express yourself artistically? Yeah, I use I use them every day. I'm using them now. I'm, um, I work with Roland a lot, um, the V-drum stuff, and on the last Evanescence tour, um, I used a strictly electronic hybrid kit. So I had pearl shells, but they were retrofitted with um, pearl true track heads. And then also some rolling pads and rolling kick inserts, rolling electric cymbals. And I was playing just, you know, not typical drum sounds. It was all electronic sounds and like, you know, loops. I would hit something that would, you know, dot, 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 that would play over the top of something else. And it's, you know, I love it. It's fascinating and it's, uh, it broadens your horizons and you can just do so much with it. You know, I'm always a fan of, I, I look at it like you're adding colors to your palette. And as an artist, you know, you want as many colors as you can get just to, you know, it's, it's more ways to express yourself. about your um, cymbals kit, uh, how do you get the sound that you really look for? And cymbals? Well, I, I um, it's funny, it depends on what I'm doing, like when I'm playing big arenas or stadiums, I like thicker, heavier cymbals because they just, they carry more, they're louder, you know, they really get above everything, but in playing places like this, I like thinner cymbals, and when I'm in the studio, I like thinner cymbals, like, you know, medium thin crashes or, um, uh, but I just, I kind of typically go for it. It's, that changes a lot for me. I've been using, believe it or not, I've been using, um, Zildjian has a series out now called the S-Series. And um, they're incredible, man. They're priced really well. They're not expensive. Um, and But they're just incredible, man. They cut. They, they've got this, this tonal quality to them that's um, unlike the A's or the heavy A's or anything like that. They're bright and quick. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of fun with those lately. If you could be a superhero, what would you want your superpowers to be? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'd be uh, Captain Sleep because out on tour it seems like sleep depravity is common. So if I could just rock all the time with no sleep and feel great, I'd be that guy. That'd be my superpower. I don't need sleep. I'm good. You, know, you don't get much of it out here. <laughs> if Hollywood um, made a movie about your life, whom would you like to see play the lead role as you? Wow. Um, that's a good one. I, you know, that's a tough question to answer because if you answer one way, it's too pretentious. If you answer another way, then it's, it's like, you know, I don't see that at all. I think Cat Williams could play me. <laughs> <laughs> Cat Williams, there you go. We'll do Cat Williams. <laughs> what keeps you, um, keeps you uh, playing drums? Uh? I, I don't know. I'm, I like I'm influenced by people. As I've gotten older in life, I guess I could say that I'm influenced by people that still love it and still have a passion for it. And like Zach Wild, you know, he's an incredible guitar player, very famous guitar player, and I consider him a friend and. You know, a guy always works, and he's always playing, and he's always creating, and he's just going for it, you know, and I admire that, and I think that it's a true testament to your love of, of something, and, uh, and you know, he and I kind of feel the same about it, and like Tommy Lee, even though he's not necessarily playing drums as much as he used to, he's still creating, he's still in the business, he's still writing music, he's still, you know, very active and always pushing himself, and, you know, I, I find myself attracted to those kinds of people, and you know, it's like it's a lifeline. I think for me, I need this outlet. I need to be able to play music. You know, even if I, you know, had a house in Turks and Caicos and was there all the time, I would still be doing this. You know, I would just be going home to Turks and Caicos. But um, I, I, I need to play. You know, it's a, it's a huge part of who I am and my personality and my identity. And um, it's it's therapy. I, I'm not quite sure who I would be if I didn't play. It might not be a good situation. <laughs> I, I might be nuts. I don't know. <laughs> not that I'm not already. I'm just healthy nuts.
many thanks for um, taking your time and answering our questions. Uh, have you have, uh, do you have any um, final word of wisdom for the Planet Drum followers? Do what you love. Love what you do. I think I've said that before, but I, I stand by it. You know, it's, you got to really love it. You know, and if you don't love it, don't do it. You know, so you got to you got to find something you love and just dig into it. And you know, with drums, I tell people all the time that like, you don't have to be as serious as me. You know, you can play two or three times a week in your bedroom for 30 minutes a day and still learn and progress and just have a good time with it because that's where it started for me. It just so happens that it turned into this. You know, but I just you know do what you love. You know, and if you honestly, I've taken time off from drums. I've walked away from drums for a, a month at a time. You know, six weeks at a time, just to let it be for a minute and get the passion back, not burn out on it. You know, and I think that's important too. Just because you walk away from something for a few weeks, six weeks, whatever, doesn't mean you're being lazy. It just means that you're you're, re you're rekindling the love. You know, it takes a minute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you, guys.